Hey everybody. Hey, it's Dr. Julie Steinauer, otherwise known as Dr. Julie to my patients. And today we're going to cover and talk about ADHD. I have a lot of great information for you and I cannot wait to deliver this video. So there's a fantastic little brochure, I don't have this flipped around for you to be able to see it appropriately, but um, there's this fantastic little brochure, I'm going to read through a couple of things about ADHD for you. Um, there's a list on the inside, looks kind of like this, it's a, a symptom list, and then it breaks it down into whether or not it's categorized as ADHD, whether or not it's sens sensory processing disorder, whether or not it's learning related visual problems, um, whether or not it is nutrition and allergies. I'm making a couple adjustments here guys, bear with me. All right, whether or not it's just a normal kid. Holy cow, we tend to sometimes forget that normal kids are kind of antsy and, you know, struggle to sit still sometimes. So let's go through a couple of the things that they classify as ADHD. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to say what's the classification as ADHD. And as I read it, I'm going to run across to vision. And I'm going to say, is it that? Could be. Okay. All right. So often fails to give close attention to details. ADHD, check. Vision related learning problems, check. All right, often has difficulty sustaining attention in tasks or play activities, check and check. All right, often does not listen when spoken to directly, check, check. Okay, getting the idea here. All right, often does not follow through on instructions or fails to finish work, check, check. Often has difficulty organizing tasks and activities, check, check. <laughs> Once again, are you getting it? <laughs> All right, um, let's see. Often avoids, dislikes, or is reluctant to engage in tasks requiring sustained mental effort. Check, check. Often loses things. Check, check. Distracted by extraneous information or stimuli. Check, check. Often forgetful in daily activities. Check, check. <laughs> Gosh, how in the world do we know if this is actually ADHD versus, I mean, is it something that could be re related with vision? Okay, so um, here's a couple of other ones. Talk successively, check, check. Blurts out answers before they've actually been completed, check, check. Uh, that's um, questions completed. Often has difficulty waiting their turn, check, check. Has difficulty remaining seated when it has to do with near work or required work, check, check. Hmm. All right. So, in a world of confusion of how do you know for sure then that it's actually ADHD versus could it be something else? I didn't even tell you tell you what the check checks were associated with sensory processing disorder and nutritional deficiency. And we could or allergies. We could have gone through those things too and those are super valid. But today we're talking vision. So, let's take a look at a patient I'm going to spotlight. And I'm going to call this young man um, Andrew. Let's call him Andrew. That's a made-up name. This is not Andrew. Although we do have an Andrew. All right. So let me show you Andrew's first ever functional visual field with us. And you can get a sense. Okay, here's one eye. And actually, the other eye is real similar. I won't flip it around because I kind of blocked off any patient identifying information. Now, a couple of weeks into our program where we utilize photosyntonics or light therapy and applied them to um, Andrew using them on a daily basis for five days a week, here's what happened next. So his next field, which was just not even two months later, it was about four weeks later, this was his next field. Okay, the same eye, and now we're starting to see that the things look bigger. Bigger, in this case, is better. Let's look at B4. There's B4, and there's what we've got now. All right, so now let's look at one more. This one actually was just, um, just this month, just in September. And now let's take a look at that field. 
So this is a functional visual field. What that means is how much area can the brain actually function seeing at a given time that it can, it can pay attention to, critical details, detailed information. Um, not necessarily just that it sees something, that, but also that it sees it, can recognize information from it, and can discern something from it. All right, so what can we do with the visual information that we see? And here's what happens for kids who look ADHD. It's very super common to see them come in and have a functional field that looks about something like this. So for you to experience what a functional field like that would be, just do this. Go like that, close an eye, look through that little tube here, okay? <laughs> With just one eye. And then think about what if my brain can only process that small incremental amount of information at a given time? What would happen to me? What would be the repercussion for that? First of all, you'd go crazy. Second of all, you'd feel like, gosh, you're not seeing a whole lot of information. Third of all, you might actually be a little bit concerned about what's going on around you because you just can't see it. And fourth of all, you also might be thinking, wow, this is not set up so hot for reading and schoolwork, right? or even sitting still and paying attention. So can I get a light bulb moment? Ding, 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 ding. Guys, if you are watching this now, I would love for you to drop down in the comments and tell me that you hop on now. Um, a little bit, something about you. Do you know someone who's ADHD? You know, tag them in this video, uh, or tag their parent in this video. Um, if you watch this on the replay and you also think like, gosh, this is so beneficial for um, these parents that I know, these teachers that I know, these, other doctors that I know, right? These other therapists that I know. Well, then tag them in this video so that they'll be able to see. Okay, so now let's go back and talk a little bit. I would love for you to try this out. If you can do this for just five minutes, five minutes, that's all I'm asking, just five minutes. I'm not talking about 24 hours a day or all of your waking hours. I'm talking five minutes. Take a paper towel tube Cut it in half so that you don't have a super uber duper long one. Although, you know, you could use a long one too. Hold that up in front of your eye and do every task that you need to do for five minutes. And then I want your comments down below. If anyone's game for doing this, say I'm in and comment down below. I don't care if it's on the replay, it doesn't matter because I'll respond to you later on. But say I'm in, try it out just for five minutes and then tell me what the result was. Tell me how much you loved being like that. Tell me how much it was exciting and you just can't wait to do work and you just can't wait to read and you just can't wait to whatever. Tell me how exciting that was. It's not. It's awful. And so these kids oftentimes who have these really narrow and small functional visual fields, they will have a lot of time, you know, trouble sitting still. They will get distracted super easily. Tell me if you get distracted, by the way, if you're looking through that tube. Did noises, sounds, different things distract you? Maybe movement in the house distract you, right? Because they're distractible because they only have the small area to look through. It's actually like a defense mechanism to be distractible in this particular case. It's kind of like keeping you safe, right? What the heck's going on around me? I might be injured. And so this is one way that people can stay safe is I'm going to move my little tube of vision around all around and I'm going to kind of sample the environment. So if you have that paper towel tube, just move it around. Just go like this. Just kind of move around like this and think, wow, that's, what if I could only see that? Now there are other reasons why people only see that. Maybe there's a disease process, something going on that's causing a person to have lost and um, caused a restriction in their visual field. But this is a little bit different. We're not really necessarily talking about it for that purpose today. We're talking about it in relationship to how it affects behavior and how we're able to function in a classroom. So this is relatable to children, but it's also maybe relatable as well if we stop and think, well, how are you functioning on your job? Are you functioning well on your job? Did you ever think, gosh, I wonder why I'm so distracted? Why am I you know, not able to sit still and pay attention? And you know, maybe you're thinking you have adult ADHD, but maybe you actually have just a visual problem that's causing you to have this very small functional visual field. And it's completely different. It's not the same that the visual field that you have taken at your you know, eye doctor's office, where you click, click, 
click <laughs> every time you see some sort of wavy or flashy light or line. It's not the same, this is different. And so we're getting different results for different reasons. But if you happen to have a small functional visual field, it's going to affect you in many areas. You know, there are actually other things that affects. We have kids and adults who are scared of the dark, um, who have motion sickness problems, afraid of heights, um, are claustrophobic. Um, I mean, I could go on who uh, have attachment disorder issues like for children and you know they're very clingy and they have a hard time breaking away. There's so many things that we could talk about on how these small functional visual fields actually affect people. I hope that you found this information valuable and if you have someone or know someone who has ADHD, tag them in this video because I want them to, I want them to try my towel tube activity for five minutes five, that's all I'm asking is five minutes, and then comment down below how awesome that was and how much they loved it, and you know, I would just love to spend life this way, right? I don't think that's going to be the case, and you can maybe clearly see why children who are ADHD labeled or who were thinking about might be labeled that can look fidgety, distractible, not sitting still, lack of focus, all those kinds of things. Again, tag people in this. It's valuable information. The world, ha the world needs to know it. Word, word has to get out about it. And that there are other ways and other things that we can do to treat this. First of all, I treat it with the photosyntonics, which we have tons of YouTube videos out there that talk about this. So go visit my YouTube channel and watch those. And for more information, also you can visit our visionforlifeworks.com website. And with that, I'm going to say thank you so much for tuning in today and tuning in on the replay. And have an awesome day. See ya.